example seven. This example is very similar to example six, but of course there are some differences. Okay, let us see what the problem talks about. 10 kilograms of R134A at 300 kilopascal, it fills a rigid container whose volume is a 14 liter. 14 liter. Remember how to change this liter to m cube. We just divide this number by 1,000. Okay. Determine the temperature and the total enthalpy in the container. And the container is now heated until the pressure is uh, 600 kilopascal. And we need to determine the temperature as well as the total enthalpy when the heating is completed. Okay. Spend some time to think about this problem. Probably two to three minutes. Okay. So pause the video now. Okay. I've assumed that you have think of it for many minutes already. So let me show you the solution. Okay, the first thing is that we have two states here. One state is at 300 kilopascal, another state is at 600 kilopascal. So at the 300 kilopascal, what is its state? Whether it's saturated or compressed or superheated, we don't know. We also have the same problem here. Okay, how can we determine this? Okay, because it's a rigid container, so we can determine this by calculating the specific volume. Okay, and here I need to also remind you one thing. This is total enthalpy. We need to find out total enthalpy. That means big letter H. So after you find out the specific enthalpy, then you need to multiply it by the total mass to finish the problem. Okay, first of all, let us compute the specific volume first in order to determine what the state is. So we equal to big letter V divided by the mass. Okay, as I mentioned, 14 liter is equal to 14 divided by 1000 uh, meter cube. So 0 0.014 divided by 10. So we get uh, 0 0.0014 M cube per kg. Okay. Okay, so we have this value, but whether it's a saturated or not, so let's go to what table, okay, what table. We have this two known pressure, this two known pressure. First of all, 300 kilopascal, so we need to go to table H12, okay, 300. Oh, unfortunately, you can see that we only get data for 280 and 320. And where is 300? Oh, that's missing. If it's missing, then we need to use the method I have uh, shown you in the previous example, that is linear interpolation. Here, this linear interpolation is actually very easy to do because 300 just lie between 280 and 320. So we can guess the VF and 300 kilopascal very uh, easily. So we have these two number, 0 0.0007697, 0 0.0007771. Okay, how about the term in 300? Note that 300 is the midpoint of 280 and 320. So this VF, because of the linearity, the VF should lie just between these two values. So the VF at 300 kilopascal, you just take that two value, add them up and then divide it by two, you will get 0 0.0007734. Okay, and this one is smaller than this smaller than 0 0.0014 and how about the VG okay these two are the VF and how about these two okay these two is the two VG at 280 kilopascal and 320 kilopascal respectively we just take the average between these two number to get the approximate value at the 300 kilopascal then you will see it just equal to 0 0.06 x0575 okay so here we have used linear interpolation but in a simplified way because the value just lies exactly at the midpoint between the two points we know so we just add them up and then divide by two so this one is indeed a saturated mixture and note that this one is at 300 kilopascal so it means that we can proceed by using table a12 Okay, so let us find out the temperature first, okay, because we need to determine the temperature. So what's the temperature? The temperature should be the saturation temperature at 300 kilopascal. 
Okay. Again, at 300 kilopascal, it's just the midpoint of 280 and 320. So let's go to the table again. We get this two value. For 280, it's negative 1.25 degrees C. But for 320, it's 2.46 degrees C. So what we need to do is that we add them up, divided by 2, to get a midpoint. That's a simplified way. We don't actually always need to draw that straight line and then calculate the slope. We can use this a simple way if it is in the right point. So negative 1.25 plus 2.46 divided by 2, and you will get 0 0.605 degrees C. Okay. So of course, it's only the approximate value. But in general, it's pretty much the same as the actual value if the known points are not too far away. In this case, only 40 kilopascal is not very far away. So this kind of interpolation is failed. So in order to find out this total enthalpy, uh, because it's a saturated mixture, so we would first calculate the quality, because I've said that the quality acts as a bridge that links up all of the properties. Okay? Once we get one property, then we can get the quality. And then once we get the quality, we can quickly obtain a specific terms of the other properties, for example, internal energy, the enthalpy, etc. So we first calculate the quality. So what's the quality? Remember, it's equal to the VF range minus the VF divided by VFG. So we have 0 0.0014 minus 0 0.0007734 divided by 0.06x0575 minus 0.0007734. Okay? So we can get the quality at the first stage 0.009313. Okay? And we can get the enthalpy. We need to know the total enthalpy. So the total enthalpy is equal to mH. So the m is the total mass. 10. How about the H? It's equal to HF plus XHFG. So if you find out the table and use the interpolation again, as I've mentioned, because 300 kilopascal is just the midpoint of 280 and 320, you get the HF at 280 and 320 respectively, and then you just add them up divided by 2, and then that's fine. So um, after interpolation, then you will get 52.65 plus the quality multiplied by the HFG. We can find that directly for the 280 and 320, and we just add them up divided by 2 to get this one, 19.195. OK? So this one is equal to 545.6. Kilojoule, or we take 3 significant figures. OK? So this is our answer, 545 kilojoule. OK? So at 300 kilopascal, it's a bit more tedious, because we just get a value 300 kilopascal is a bit more tedious, because we just get a value of 280 and 320. And all of the terms, we need to use interpolation to find out the term at 300 kilopascal. But for 600 kilopascal, we have all the terms in the table. And I will just go faster, OK? So at 600 kilopascal, this time, I would not check the table for you. I just copy down the result. So T will be equal to the saturated at 600 kilopascal. You can quickly find that, and the number is 21.55 degrees C. Okay? How about the total enthalpy? Okay? Again, we calculate the quality first, and looks that for 600 kilopascal, it is still a saturated mixture. Okay? We can just uh, calculate the quality. So here, X2 equal to 0 0.0014 minus, okay, the VF is uh, 0 0.00. 8198 divided by 0.03435 minus 0 0.00x198. Oh, I missed one zero. One more zero here. I also missed one zero here. So zero. Should be three zero after the small place. Okay. So you get this value. 0 0.01731. Okay. So we can also find the total enthalpy. So total enthalpy is H equal to MH equal to 10 multiplied by HF. The HF at 600 kilopascal is XT1.5 plus the quality multiplied by the 
HRC. Okay. And uh, we can finally find out the number x four six kilojoule. Okay. It shows the power of using the method tool I have stated in example five, because we can directly get the quality. Okay. We don't need to calculate it separately. So we can get this quality, and then we can use this quality to link up all of the terms here, and uh, we can find the average specific properties. For example, in this case, it's a specific enthalpy. Okay. Because we get the quality. Okay. And other terms will be known if we know uh, either the pressure or the saturated temperature. In this case, because the pressure has been given, so we use table A12. If next time we have the saturated temperature, then you go to table A11 to find out the properties. That's the R134 temperature table. Okay, so that will be example seven. Let us study this example again because this style would be very common if the substance is a saturated liquid vapor mixture.